Been in there too long. Hey, Kaziski. What's going on in there? They got a big problem, Kirby. They don't know whether to give you guys two weeks in London or two weeks in Paris. <laughs> Saddest. We haven't been able to spot it from the air, but we know somewhere between these two coordinates they've got a radar and communication set up. Orders are to get in and blow it if you possibly can. Now, if you can't get close enough, give us a fix by radio. We'll try to get an airstrike. You'll be out of radio range until you get back to this area. The sending us a demolitions man. As soon as he arrives, you can take off. Take Adams and McCall with you. That's it. How bad? Uh, it's just his leg, but he's he's bleeding pretty bad. Hey, nice job. You do it? No, no, there was a medic here. He took off. Hey, give me a hand. No, you better get a stretcher. He could be in shock. Hey, Jonesy, bring a stretcher. Yes, sir. Yes, Major, the patrol will be taking off as soon as the demolitions man gets here. Right. Lieutenant Hanley? Yeah. Private Harris, sir. Demolitions.
guest star, James Franciscus. Okay, Harris, that's the setup. Now, if you can't get close enough, pull out and call the coordinates. Let's go, Harris. Need anything from supplies? No, no, Sergeant. I'm loaded. Satchel charges, plastics, the works. Say, does this happen often? Yep. And twice on Sundays. Watch it, this stuff's smart. Come on, Kirby, it doesn't hurt that much. What, you, you gonna sit there and tell me how much it don't hurt? I'll go down to town and get myself a real doctor. I can't play around with a head wound like this. Head wound? <laughs> what happened? Oh, he's okay, Sergeant. He's got nicked by a rock. Nick! Doc, that thing almost knocked my head off. This is Harris. Demolitions have begun with us. This is Doc, Kirby, Cage, oh. McCall. That's Adams. Hey. Demolition? What do we got this time? Communication center. I'll go get some ammo. Better get your gear together. We're pulling out soon. It's okay, huh? Hmm? The sergeant. Seems like he knows what it's all about. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> That's good. How long you been up here? Oh, not long. Matter of fact, it's my first time out alone. I've been working with a buddy. Hey, how does this one look? Is it gonna be pretty rough? It's set up the way I'm hoping. We'll probably just end up spotting it and getting out of there. All right, let's pull out. Adams, take the point. Machine gun. 
Can't do any good from here. We'll have to get closer. Gage, take Harris and McCall. Head up on the left. Kirby, you're on me. We'll head up this way. Try to get around them. Split their fire. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Doc.
Oh, you'll be all right, McCall. Went through clean. It's not broken. Where'd you learn all your first aid? In medical school, Doc. Okay, Sergeant. Where's the radio? Oh, I left it behind a log back there. Kirby, get the radio and Adam's dog tags. Just like that, huh? Get his dog tags and it's over. He's dead, Harris. Nothing will change that. Okay, let's move out. Case, take a point. Sergeant. You know, Harris bandaged his arm. He told me he went to medical school. Seems kind of funny he should be in demolitions. Yeah, come on, Doc. Let's go. Crossroads up ahead, check it out. Here. Let me change that thing for you. It's okay. Well, they really have the communication center buried somewhere, haven't they? Well, it's got to be around here someplace. It's okay. You know, I'm lucky it didn't hit that nerve there, the, the uh, what do you call it? Radial nerve. Yeah, that's it. Harris said it could have paralyzed my hand. I might have had to go home. <clears throat> Looks like you got a real happy patient there. So I want to ask you something. How'd you get into demolitions? Well, I got drafted. I didn't exactly volunteer. Now, what I mean is, uh, with your training, you ought to be a medic. What'd you do, uh, quit school? No, no, I, uh, I graduated. Finished my internship, too. Well, then you're a doctor. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I come from a real family of doctors. My father, my brother. I don't understand. I mean, why demolitions? With, with your training as a doctor, it's, it's a long way from killing people. I never killed anybody. Look, Doc, it's, uh, it's just a little complicated. Leave it alone, will you? It's all clear, Sarge. Okay, let's go.
Cash. Leave the radio here, and you and Kirby are on me. Circle around, use those trees for cover. We'll wait here till you get into a good firing position. Then we'll go around, try to get in behind it. I don't open up unless they spot us. Okay, take off. Here and here. You're out of radio range here, so if something goes wrong, you take off and send the coordinates in. You got it? Look, Sergeant, why are you trying to blow that thing? We got the coordinates. Why don't we just get out of here? I mean, it, there are people in there. They Look, it's just too risky. We could lose the whole thing. If anything goes wrong, Dr. Mack will send the coordinates in. Harris, you're coming with me. Get your gear ready. You ought to know he's a doctor. I mean, he went to medical school and internship and everything. Well, right now he's a demo man. I need him to blow our radar station. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, Harris, let's go. Harris! Let's go. Sergeant isn't doing his job. I don't know how you feel, but if we didn't do it, somebody else would have to. All right, then let someone else do it. Roger, over. I bet he gets all the tough assignments. Roger, out. You have anything good to say for a change? Yeah, we go again. Doc, Harris. Go on another mission. We'll meet up with a Maquis. He'll fill us in. There's a cave about half a mile up the road. We'll meet him there. Kirby, take the point. Harris. I don't know what your problem is, but if you want to stay alive, you better stop thinking like a soldier. Back there, you left yourself wide open. Yeah, and you saved my life, Sergeant. Thanks. Get off it, Harris. Next time, one of us may need your help. Out here, we depend on each other. Move out.
anything? No, it's all quiet out there. No sign of him yet. Keep your eye out for him. Okay. Hey, Kirby. This ought to be worth a couple of weeks of R&R, &R, huh? Uh, you kidding? By the time you get back, they won't even be able to find that scratch of yours. Oh. Feels kind of good to sit down for a change, doesn't it? up, does he? Well, he doesn't get much of a chance to. Oh, come on, Doc. Get off it, will you? I know his type. Push, push, push all the time. You know why? Because he's got to be perfect, that's why. Hey, it's just like my father. Never lets up. Well, isn't that what it takes to be a doctor? Why did you go so far through medical school? You must have known what it was like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I knew what it was like, all right. I lived with it all my life. You see, I never had a choice. Nobody asked me. My father just decided. He was a doctor. My brother was a doctor. I just naturally figured I had to be a doctor. Well, did your brother feel the same way you do? No. No, he loved it. And he was good, too. Really good. Until it killed him. What happened? Well, he's in the medical corps. Came ashore in Normandy. Practically worked around the clock. He was operating in a two by four tent near the front lines. A shell landed right on top of him. This is Boucher. You have a message for us? Yes, the boss have captured an American, a colonel. At five o'clock, they will be transporting him to a prison down the main road south of here. You know? He will be in a staff car. It will be guarded, but I am told that you must rescue him. That is the message. Any other vehicles with it? I know nothing else. I... I must go now, Sergeant. Good luck. Cage. Sergeant, if the Colonel's that important, they might be bringing him through with a tank. Must have been pretty rough on your father. What? When your brother got it. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> he 
You couldn't tell, though. It's just another part of being the perfect doctor. You learn to hide your emotions, never let anyone know how you feel. You know, I used to sit and watch him operate. He's like a machine. Four or five hours at a stretch, no expression on his face. You, you couldn't tell whether his patient was living or dying. He'd be bent over that table, moving his hands like, like he was playing a piano, never missing a note. Sounds like a good doctor. Yeah, he is. Created whole new procedures in surgery. You know what he used to say? He used to say there's a beat between life and death that he, he could feel with his hands. I mean, he could tell when a man was dying because he could, he could feel it in his fingertips. And he knew exactly what had to be done and how to do it. Could you do that, Doc? I couldn't. That's what you're afraid of. So you quit. No, I didn't quit. I just never started, that's all. sides. Let's go. some high ground, let us know when they're coming. Okay. All right, move some of these logs in here for cover. the side of the road. Hit him from there.
two vehicles. No armor. The colonel is in the back one. Get across the road with Kirby. You two hit the first one. We'll get the one with the colonel in it. Okay. You take the first car. throat. He's choking. He's bad, Sergeant. We have to get out of here. Lift him up. We'll take him back to the cave. here like this. Well, can he make it back to our lines the way he is? No. Well, you don't have a choice. Look, Sergeant, I'm not talking about opening a sulfur pack. I'm talking about cutting a man's throat. One mistake and I'd kill him. But if you operate now, I might have a chance, right? Now, look, Sergeant, you don't understand. Oh, no, I think I do understand. That's why you don't want to be a doctor. You're afraid you might kill somebody. 
Well, you quit now and you will kill him. I think he's got a chance. What about you? What are you going to do? Well, it's not easy when you've been afraid of something as long as I have. But, I'm going to give it a try. Good luck, Harris. Thanks, Sergeant. 